Alex Jones. Americans know him as a brash, loud, aggressive, culturally unaware, gun-obsessed conspiracy theorist who's more concerned about being assassinated by the federal government than the real threat to his life, type 2 diabetes. To the rest of the world, however, Alex Jones is known as an American. Today, we're going to take a look at the life and times of Alex Jones and uncover once and for all if it really was him that let the dogs out. <laughs> Alex was born in 1974, the same year that Nixon resigned after the Watergate scandal. Coincidence? Yeah, probably. He's described as always being an avid reader, and was exposed to conspiracy thinking from a young age when he read None Dare Call It A Conspiracy by Gary Allen. Side note, I read it. It's a crock of shit. If you want to understand why it's a crock of shit, go to Amazon, find the book, and listen to the two-minute audible sample of the introduction. It's two minutes of him poisoning the well, implying that there are nefarious excuses for why the book might not sell well, or why, quote, experts will ridicule his ridiculous ideas. It kind of reads like a 200-page long Facebook boomer meme, but it had done enough to pique Alex's interest. Fast forward to 1993. Alex Jones is finishing his senior year of high school at the time federal agents siege the compound of a religious group in Waco, Texas. To those of us that haven't normalised bulletproof backpacks, that puts him around about 17, 18 years old. This event became known as the Waco Siege, and it led to the tragic deaths of almost 80 people. Most people see it as a disaster, a tragedy born out of extreme negligence on behalf of the ATF, but Alex goes a step further. He believes it to be an assassination by the Deep State. <laughs> Two years after the Waco siege, a terrorist named Timothy McVeigh bombed a federal building in Oklahoma City in retaliation to the government's handling of the siege. The bombing killed 168 people, 19 of which were children, and caused hundreds of millions of dollars worth of damages. Once McVeigh was caught and his history of being a gun-obsessed anti-government KKK sympathizer was exposed, Alex Jones did exactly what you'd expect him to do. He claimed that McVeigh was a government plant, and in his 1998 documentary, America Destroyed by Design, he claimed that McVeigh wasn't actually the real bomber, and that the real bombs were planted inside the building and detonated by black ops agents to further the deep state's ambition of creating a communist state. The most impressive part about this documentary, by the way, is that despite it opening with him standing next to a 40-foot cactus, he still somehow manages to be the biggest prick on the screen. In 1999, Alex founded InfoWars, a website slash talk show in which he platforms his crackhead conspiracies and political discussions. By 2017, it was reported that InfoWars.com was receiving upwards of 10 million visits every month. Just to give you an idea of scale, imagine yourself. Now multiply that by 10 million. That's in it. Okay, so now we're going to run through a few of the conspiracy theories that Alex Jones and those on his platform have peddled. And I thought it might be fun if I start each case by telling you the facts of the matter, then show you how Alex decided to present them. Let's hurry up and get this over with, because let's face it, we've all got shit to do. Pizzagate. Okay, so. Alex Jones has accused Hillary Clinton and her campaign manager John Podesta of running a satanic child sex cult out of the basement of a pizzeria. I know what you're thinking, and no, it's not Pizza Express Woking, we're talking about Comet Ping Pong in Washington, D.C. Now, here are the facts of the matter. 1. Comet Ping Pong does not have a basement. 2. WikiLeaks published some of Hillary Clinton's emails from her presidential campaign. 3. Pizza was mentioned sometimes. Now let's hear how Alex chose to frame these facts. When I think about all the children Hillary Clinton has personally murdered and, and chopped up and, and, and raped, I have zero fear standing up against her. Yeah, you heard me right. Hillary Clinton has personally murdered children. I just can't hold back the truth anymore. Hillary Clinton is one of the most vicious serial killers the planet's ever seen. I'm afraid I could only provide the audio because he pulled the video down for reasons I assume are obvious. Now's probably a great time also to thank my Patreon subscribers too, because fuck me, this video is not getting monetized. I know those of us that aren't completely brain-dead pigeon fuckers are thinking, well, this is completely beyond absurdity. Surely nobody actually treated this with any degree of seriousness. He's almost harmless. But you're forgetting something. America exists. 
Last weekend, as people were dining inside here, a 28-year-old man turned up armed with an assault rifle to, as he put it, self-investigate what police have called a fictitious online conspiracy theory. That's right, as a direct result of Alex being a complete toad, a man actually rocked up to Comet fucking ping pong with a rifle to raid the not real sex trafficking ring in an effort to free the imaginary kids from the basement that definitely doesn't exist. While inside the pizzeria searching for the basement entrance, he discharged his firearm while non-Satanists were dining. He was arrested and sentenced to four years in prison. Since then, Alex has scrubbed all mention of Pizzagate from his website and issued an apology that may or may not have been written by a lawyer. He apologises for being a complete twat, for having a stupid brain full of dumb stupid shit, and for having a stupid face with tiny little stupid eyes. I mean, he didn't use those words, but that's what I took from it. Gay frogs. Atrazine. It's a chemical herbicide used in crop fields to prevent the growth of certain weeds, and thanks to something called agricultural runoff, it can be found in the water that surrounds the fields in which it is used. According to the CDC, atrazine can cause some health issues in humans. It can increase the risk of preterm delivery, as well as generally being an endocrine disruptor, which means that it affects your body's natural hormone production. There were also studies conducted to investigate the effect of atrazine on frogs in the area, and due to its status as an endocrine disruptor, researchers discovered that it can cause hermaphroditic change in frogs as well. Well, it sounds interesting, right? Well, it is, and if you'd like to learn more, I'll point you to the fantastically thorough video over at Oki's Weird Stories. But we aren't here to talk about Oki. We're here to talk about Alex fucking Jones. Here's how he decided to present the aforementioned set of facts. Yeah, there it is, the gay bomb. Look it up for yourself. I mean, this is what they're... What do you think tap water is? It's a gay bomb, baby. And I'm not saying people didn't naturally have homosexual feelings. I'm not even getting into it, quite frankly. I mean, give me a break. You think I am, like, oh, shocked by it, so I'm up here bashing it because I don't like gay people? I don't like them putting chemicals in the water that turn the friggin' frogs gay! Do you understand that? Serious crap! I'm sick of being social engineered. It's not funny! Now, if it makes you feel any better, atrazine has been banned in the UK and the EU since 2004 because, you know, duh. And again, just to really nail down the disagreement here, some chemicals being spilled into some water as a result of a corporation trying to maximize profit is not the same as the US government creating gay bombs and seeding it into the water supply to gay up the nation. There really isn't much more to say about this one, but it is absolutely true that the US government did research a number of ways to disrupt a fighting force as late as 2002, one of which was a chemical that made enemy combatants so horny that they wanted to bang their buddies. It's fucking weird, obviously, but it was shit-canned because it was a really fucking stupid idea. Other ideas included a bad breath bomb and a bomb that made the enemy fart uncontrollably. Now, the best thing about the whole story is that it's probably the closest Alex has ever come to even being in the same continent as the truth, but apparently screaming that the US government created a chemical to turn frogs gay has only served to reinforce the idea that he's a completely hysterical ball bag. 9-11. His coverage of 9-11 is really what made Alex Jones a household name. In broken households, but still. Before we get ahead of ourselves, once again, let me just lay down the facts. 1. On September 11, 2001, a group of terrorists hijacked and crashed two commercial airplanes into the World Trade Center, and a third airplane into the Pentagon. There was a fourth plane, but the passengers heroically fought back and the plane crashed without hitting its target, presumed to be the Capitol building. 2. The planes were recorded hitting the buildings, and the buildings then fell down. 3. Al-Qaeda took responsibility for the attacks, and all 19 terrorists that hijacked the planes were found to have been members of Al-Qaeda. So what did Alex report? Well, in his broadcast the day after 9-11, he said that he had predicted this attack, which, you know, he sort of did, in the same sense that I predict that I'll take a honking great big shit at some point in the next decade. 
He claims that the terrorists were trained and funded by the CIA using money from the EU so that the New World Order can take away your freedoms by, like, stopping you putting shampoo in your carry-on. I don't know, I think his argument just kind of shifts as he drifts in and out of his ketamine-induced fever dream. The main gist of his point is that the government bombed itself in order to gain cross-party sympathy so that they can introduce more stringent security measures, further limiting your freedoms. I'm not sure if they just forgot to do the bit where they introduced the communism or something, but debunking this shit at this point is a bit like debunking God. You shouldn't feel the need to debunk it. It's down to the claimant to produce evidence that supports their theory. With that being said, let's have a look at the evidence they show that supports their theory. Obviously, if you still believe any of this shit, it's purely for lack of trying at this point, but we might as well cover it here. 1. Jet fuel doesn't melt steel beams. Yeah, fair enough. Jet fuel can't melt steel. But, to be clear, you don't need to melt steel to make it all wibbly and wobbly. While steel melts at almost 1400 degrees Celsius, and jet fuel burns at around 800 degrees Celsius, steel can bend from as little as 300 degrees Celsius. Turns out, when you fly a commercial airliner into a building, then heat up the steel beams enough for them to turn into wet noodles, the building has a tendency to not remain upright. Apologies if that got too technical for the patriots out there. 2. The only way buildings fall down like that is by controlled demolition. No. Just know. Go look at this video and read this paper by Purdue University. The way the towers fell is consistent with a big, huge plane being crashed into them. Go figure. If you can't be asked to watch the thing or read the thing, just take my word for it, it it's really fucking boring. There really isn't really any more to say about this. I mean, to believe that this was committed by the US government in collaboration with the EU and using CIA assets in Pakistan, Iraq, Egypt, and Saudi Arabia, you'd have to believe that not a single person involved in the entire chain has ever decided to come forward with evidence that could expose any of this at all. Alex himself seems to drift between believing that the government is full of incompetent idiots to believing that they have perfectly engineered every major catastrophe in the last hundred years, with no one ever finding a single shred of hard evidence. Make your mind up, Alex. Are they smart, or are they more like you? The New World Order We've covered a few things by now, and I think it's probably worth me explaining what Alex means when he talks about this mysterious New World Order. So, you know the government, right? Well, some conspiracy nuts think that there's a shadowy secret government within the government that's trying to secretly manipulate power structures to their advantage. They call this group the Deep State. While the Deep State is referring specifically to the American government, the New World Order supposes the same thing, but on a global scale. It's their theory that the EU, NATO, and other multinational groups were founded as an attempt by the New World Order to create a worldwide communist totalitarian government that will rule the world. Naturally, as with any conspiracy theory, this is steeped in anti-Semitism too, and in an effort to fight claims that he himself is propagating anti-Semitism, Alex chose to discuss these topics with Jewish allies like Kanye West and Nick Fuentes. You don't deserve to be called that and demonized. Well, I... I see, I, I see good things about Hitler also. The Jew, I love everyone. I'm done with the classifications. Every human being has something of value that they brought to the table, especially Hitler. Now, I'm sure there are some wayward souls amongst us that would think that just because Alex Jones decided to host these people and pay these people and allow them to discuss their hatred of Jews and not interrupt them and actually, now that I think about it, not along to what they're saying, that he was somehow okay with their messaging. It's honestly kind of hard to characterise these beliefs fairly, mostly because it's really hard to understand the reasoning of someone with the same level of general intelligence as a lobotomized camel, but also because the very nature of these conspiracies is that they shift and change depending on who is arguing with who. Some believe the New World Order is the Illuminati rebranded, while others say that this argument was put out by the Deep State themselves in order to meme the idea of a Deep State. Alex regularly makes spurious claims in this vein, even claiming that KKK protesters were actually Jewish Deep State actors. Ultimately, Alex's claims about a Deep State or the New World Order have absolutely zero basis in fact. 
The truth is, you could replace Alex's claims about the EU or the New World Order with literally any other organisation in the world, and you would have as much evidence as he does to support your claim. FEMA Concentration Camps Back in 2010, Alex Jones co-directed a documentary called Police State 4 – The Rise of FEMA. Long story short, and it was a fucking long story, he complains that the government possess powers that would allow them to take control of roadways, food distribution, rehoming people, and all sorts of other stuff that would help in the event of a crisis or a state of emergency. Now, for most people, it's not hard to see the benefits of having a contingency plan in place for an elected government to make sure people are housed and fed in the event of a national catastrophe. But for Alex and Co, this really is just as blatant as Red Dawn, which he unironically references several times throughout the documentary. I mean, just looking at the meta of all this, just look at the editing here and tell me you genuinely believe this is just a well-meaning man trying to find the truth. I mean, for me personally, the most worrying part of the documentary is that it implies the existence of at least three more. In his regular broadcasts, he points to FEMA concentration camps as if they exist in the USA right now. They don't, obviously, but a lot of conspiracy nuts seem to latch onto the fact that the US military conducted one training exercise in 2015 and just sort of assumed that meant the government was preparing to manufacture an emergency to enslave the nation, or whatever. That particular military exercise was named Jade Helm, and Alex Jones took to the airwaves once more to explain the significance of this naming. Not that you need me to explain it to you, but the word Jade was an obvious and not racist reference to China, who he claims will later join to help the government enslave the nation. And Helm, of course, is an acronym for Homeland Eradication of Local Militants. I'm not joking, he actually reported that, showing regular humans with not mental brains that you can find conspiracies and dog whistles just about anywhere if only you looked hard enough. Supplements Alex Jones is funded in large part by the Infowars store, where he peddles health supplements to his fanbase of basement-dwelling diabetic doomsday preppers. He sells anything from Dr. Jones's top brain mental mind supplements to Survival Shield X2 nascent iodine, which is perfect for fighting back against the globalists. Perhaps what's worse than the way he advertises these products is the markup that he puts on them. He sells turmeric supplements for $37, despite similar products being available at around $10. He's pushing CBD oil at $99, despite the same thing being sold at around $25 elsewhere. You can pretty much guarantee that everything in his store is being sold at triple the average market price, but with the promise that there are absolutely no toxins or secret government gay bombs that could turn you or your pet frog as camp as a row of pink tents. And if that isn't worth paying extra for, I don't know what is. In 2022, the Huffington Post revealed that Alex made $165 million between 2015 and 2018 purely by selling overpriced Freedom Coffee and buckets of freeze-dried dog shit. Now, to be fair, the issue here might just be that I don't like how Americans' advertising standards are just so predatory. Call me a cunt, but I think pushing vitamin supplements for quadruple the market rate because you've sold someone on the idea that the government and apparently their toothpaste is trying to kill them is just a bit icky. So where can you find Alex Jones now? Well, if you're in Texas, you could probably find him at your local courthouse filing bankruptcy paperwork. Oh, wait, yeah, I haven't gone to that part yet. In 2012, a school shooter entered Sandy Hook Elementary School and shot and killed 20 children and six teachers. As the nation mourned the loss of 26 innocent lives, Alex Jones decided to broadcast his show just hours after the tragedy. He said that the shooting was fake, that the children and their families were crisis actors in league with the deep state to justify restricting Americans' access to guns. I'm not going to play the clips, but you can see some of his broadcasts from the link in the description via the Law and Crime Network. The list of dumb, stupid, ignorant shit he broadcast includes interviewing police officers from completely different states about how they personally would have handled an active shooter. He claimed that he predicted a mass shooting, as if that was at all hard to predict in America. He pulled out his usual example of Hitler destroying the Reichstag in 1933 to turn public sentiment against his enemies to show that this was probably the same thing. He claimed that parents were laughing up until cameras were pointed at them, at which point they would just start crying. He said at one point, quote, I watched the footage and it looks like a drill. 
Fantastic. Thanks, Alex. Thanks for explaining what a fucking drill is. I'm sure your extensive experience of watching Blue Bloods is our light in the dark on this issue. These claims, and the vitriol that came along with it, went on for years. The families of the victims had endured death threats, rape threats, constant harassment at their homes and online. The gravesites of children were trawled, desecrated, and urinated on by Sandy Hook deniers. The things that these families have endured because of the rhetoric of people like Alex Jones is unforgivable. After years of attacks, the families did get some justice, though, after they opened a class action lawsuit in both Texas and Connecticut. The trials were interesting. Alex lied about not having any text messages on his phone, but his lawyers accidentally sent the opposition every text he sent and received over the previous two years, and also accidentally didn't identify it as privileged information. This made Alex look like a complete cock, obviously, but he denied lying under oath and claimed that he was just mistaken. He lied several times throughout his testimonies and claims that he was experiencing a form of psychosis at the time of reporting on the tragedy. By the time the cases were over, Alex Jones was ordered to pay a sum total of $1.5 billion in damages to the families, and declared bankruptcy for both himself and his company Free Speech Systems at the end of 2022. Now, I'd love to tell you it ended there. I really would. I wish he had all of his assets ripped away and was forced to spend the rest of his life drinking piss water off the streets of Texas, but it doesn't. As of February 2024, the families are yet to see a single penny from Alex. He was found to be transferring personal assets to family and friends in order to avoid paying the families what they are owed. His business, Free Speech Systems, which is also bankrupt, has begun transferring millions of dollars in assets to another company, PQPR. PQPR is a company that formerly provided pharmaceuticals and supplements for InfoWars, and Alex owns it with his parents, so you can see why that's really, really fucky. Despite the bankruptcy, Alex is still a multi-millionaire who spends upwards of $90,000 a month. That includes almost $8,000 on housekeeping, over $6,000 on meals and entertainment, and around $3,400 on groceries. In one single month. The families have also had the amount owed to them from Alex drastically reduced because he, quote, doesn't have that kind of money. It's astonishing to me how the morally and literally bankrupt scum can continue to protect their millions completely legally, despite that same legal system telling them they must pay the victims they defamed. So what do we do about it? Fuck knows, to be honest. The obvious answer is to stop listening to him, stop engaging with him, and stop supporting anything that he's a part of. I've watched a lot of his show over the last couple of weeks, and it's unbelievable to me that anyone can listen to him and think he's coherent about anything at all. I can at least give you some tips on how to upgrade your bullshit detector. 1. Occam's Razor Occam's Razor is a principle that suggests the simplest explanation is usually the most likely to be correct. For example, which is more likely? That a globalist shadow government colluded along with thousands more to seamlessly allow the takeover of a group of planes to fly them into the Twin Towers as a ruse to cover up the controlled demolition of said buildings in an effort to introduce a communist totalitarian government with no whistleblowers or contradictory evidence, or that a group of terrorists hijacked some planes and attacked the US. 2. If a story you find to be absolutely groundbreaking in its significance is only being reported on by fringe outlets, ask yourself why. For example, when Infowars reported that a clan rally was actually just a group of Jewish actors that quote, look like the cast of Seinfeld when they took their hoods off, why was no one reporting it? Surely Alex had evidence for his claims, right? So. Could it be because the BBC, CNN, the New York Times, the Huffington Post are all part of this globalist conspiracy? Or could it possibly be a fib? 3. Perhaps most importantly, understand the difference between the fact of the matter and rhetoric. Alex Jones, along with other conspiracy twats, are pretty good at taking one or two facts and building a narrative around it that is completely untrue. For example, I'm writing this sentence on a Thursday. I could tell you that Thursday is named after the Norse god Thor, which is true. 
I could also tell you that it's named as such because the New World Order are dog-whistling the God of Thunder because they have secret technology that could generate thunderstorms and allow them to declare a state of emergency, thereby allowing them to disregard the rights of ordinary Americans and enact their powers to build FEMA concentration camps and enslave patriots. The last part? Complete bullshit. I made it up as I typed. Understanding the difference between the facts and what somebody infers from those facts is a critical skill, and fans of Alex Jones would do well to... Wait a minute. Alex. Jones. Nine letters. Conspiracy. Eleven letters. Nine. Eleven. Eleven. One. And one. Is two. As in two towers. Eleven minus two is nine. As in nine eleven. My god, this goes all the way to the top. Inside job. Nine letters. Who was president during 9-11? George W. Bush. Eleven letters. Nine. Eleven. Who destroyed the Reichstag in 1933 to aid his rise to power? Adolf Hitler. Eleven letters. What language did Adolf Hitler speak? German. What's the German word for no? As in, no, please don't do more terrorism. It's nine. As in nine, eleven. Oh my god, he's fucking right. He's fucking right. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> Thank you for watching. If you like this video and want to support the content that I make, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. Most of my videos are either restricted or outright demonetized, which, to be fair, is my fault for calling everyone cunts, but you can support from as little as £1 a month, and the link is in the description. Speaking of, thank you to my delectable and voluptuous patrons on screen right now. You guys really butter my bread, and God bless you for it. Love you. Bye-bye.